7 sixteenths and half. Get another 7 sixteenths and half. Make sure we got one of each, two of each. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We've got a minor breakdown. Nothing major. Got to find the uh, ratchets over here. Socket set. And I'll show you what's going on. But as you can see from here, well, maybe you can with this camera, that second greenhouse is deflated. The uh, little fan, it's a third horsepower, uh, might be a fifth horse, it ain't very big. Anyway, it stalled out yesterday morning. Uh, Carol noticed that it was going flat yesterday. So we're going to go on over and pull it off, take it into the shop see if it's you know an oil light bronze something that we can re-oil and clean or whether or not it needs to be replaced I'll bring you back here when we get up there as you can see the main fan still works and everything and the louvers are still working it's just it's just that little thing in right there so we'll climb up here and take a look Huh. It might have just burned out because that is working extremely easy, which is very unusual. Huh, that's odd. Do you suppose something happened to the power on there like that? <clears throat> Maybe a breaker trapped? Probably not, but. That one there was trapped. I don't know why. Problem is, I don't know what it goes to. Because the electrician just rewired all that stuff. So, let's go on up and take another look here. Huh. That one's full of mud daubers. No, it doesn't appear to be working. Okay, I'm gonna take it off. Just full bolts. I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so we got this thing off. I'm kinda, I'm thinking this here might be bad. I don't know. But, if nothing else, you know, I might try to bypass that. I don't know really what ails it, but we're gonna plug it in. Oh shit. Guess I took it off for nothing. Can you imagine that? All that work, take that off. And it's a problem with the electrical in the greenhouse. So, I guess I gotta take out some screwdrivers and get into that main panel. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get some air and blow this out. So basically, any 110 squirrel cage blow will work on a greenhouse as long as you've got a cover that you can regulate it with. That's the only thing you got to do, and that's just, you know, made by the company that sold this thing. They bought them in bulk and made their own cover for it. And But when you buy them, you have to put your own cord on them. You know, it's not much, and they get like two or three hundred dollars for these. It's a ridiculous amount of money for what they are. You can uh, 
make your own real cheap. Look at this, guys. What do you bet that's the problem? Where's the problem at? Yeah, it's in that light right there. Yeah, huh. yeah. So that light is in there setting on the damp ground. Obvious it tripped the ground fault. So, simple. I never even thought to look at that. I really wasn't sure if that actually went down and went through here, if it went right direct into here, but it's obvious um, it's in the system. Don't know how it is because they got two of them coming out. I'm not sure. Once the electricians get into this stuff and mess with it, yeah, you know, who knows? Because I don't think I had a ground fault out here. Almost positive I didn't because I think they suck. But I know they got that purpose. But anyway, um, yeah, I'll bolt this back up. We'll uh, be on our way. Okay, we got that little blower all put up. I'll plug her in here. She's a blowing. We'll go outside there and see how she blows up. It'll blow up quite fast. But probably not fast enough that you want to watch it. I'll uh, put you on time lapse for a few minutes. So anyway, it's just starting to puff. Um, this will take probably an hour, hour and a half to fill up. Quite a lot of volume in this. Now, you can see, you don't think it's lifting on the top, but see, this is all filling with air down here. And it's got to fill this all the way down through. So it takes a lot of air. Once this all billows out, then it'll start getting pulled up by the top, pushing out. Anyway, it takes a lot of volume. So just time but I want to show you the best way if you're putting up a greenhouse the best way to do it is this little tiny guy right here and this is the way we used to do it old school back in the day put yourself up a piece of wood put your first piece of plastic on run some little wooden strips around it and cut the hole out put the blower on the back side and then put your outside sheet over the outside the reason they went away from that style is everybody said, well, it won't equalize on the both sides, bullshit. It equalizes just fine. This greenhouse here, well, we had it on all of them until we thought we'd be, you know, up to date. And we got all that modern stuff. You can see how that's all billowed out, just like the other side. Nothing, nothing wrong with it at all. That one, like I say, is going to take a while. This one here has got the fancy stuff, too. Um... Of course, you can make them, too, if you've got a way to get through the plastic. That's the problem. And you can't use PVC. This plastic they use is something other than PVC. PVC and greenhouse plastic doesn't agree with one another. Ooh, is it hot in here? So that's the little aluminum pieces that they use. And then, <clears throat> you know, it's just a T. This is real straightforward. Anybody could make it. Wow, hot in here. Yeah. Probably you can't see either. I can't. Yeah, that's better. So, if you're gonna build a greenhouse and you're on a budget, this right here is the way to go. <laughs> this is the outside looking in on that same one. You don't even have to remove the plastic, just, just make an X in it. You know, this right here is what's sealing it. And put it together. That'll, that'll blow right out, it'll find its way. It does its thing. So, anyway. 
just my thoughts on greenhouse blowers. So anyway, I think catastrophes averted here. We uh, we don't have to buy a new blower, which makes us happy because they're just the motors now are over a hundred dollars. So anyway, I'll bring you back and show this in about an hour. Well, it's evening now. Kind of a beautiful evening. It's about 70 degrees. And we got lucky. That thunderhead right there developed about a mile and a half to the east of us. So we got by without a storm. And uh, we got our wood, quite a lot of it piled over there. Carol just picking up a few strays that the bucket didn't pick up. And we'll show you what the air pressure does in that greenhouse after a day. It's been going about, uh, I don't know, eight, nine hours. It's just like 7.30 at night. Sun's gone down. But she's tight as a fiddle string. Matter of fact, I'm gonna shut the damper down on it because it's a little hard. I can tell by looking at it. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a little hotter than it ought to be. So they've actually got figures for that. How many uh, inches of water column that should have. I believe it's two in the summer and four in the winter. Pretty sure that's the numbers. But you can see that vent's wide open. And uh, I think I can reach it with this. And we'll just pull it right down. Like so. That's all there is to it. Put that back. So yeah, that'll equalize and all be for five days, you know, before it really settles in. But that's where it needs to be, just from experience, we know. Shut it right up. So anyway, hope everybody enjoyed that little foolish video. <laughs> Goes to show you best intentions sometimes, you know, we all screw up a little bit. But anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Keep safe, and we'll see you on the next one.